So the obvious thing is on Halloween, you know, you, you've got your pumpkins and the jack-o'-lanterns. But what you can also do is if you only do one side of the jack-o'-lantern, you can go around to the back side. And I can turn this at Thanksgiving time, put some corn around it or some corn stalks or something. And we got ourselves decoration for most of the winter. Um, but what I'm going to take you to is the pumpkin I'm starting to carve here. And I wanted a large pumpkin so I can display things on it. So I took a log. This is about a three foot log. Uh, it's white pine. And I'm starting to put the, the curves in. So what you do is you, you whack the whole area at an angle on top and then you cut in to the bottom. And I actually laid this thing on its side, cut in, and then took a wedge out because it was easier than kneeling down and doing it. I just put it on the ground and rolled it around and cut it. Um, I will shape this and make this much prettier, but I'm purposely leaving the stem off because what I'm going to do is put a piece of rebar sticking up. And why I call it a display pumpkin is because I'm going to stick other sculptures on top of it throughout the year. So right now I'll probably make a black cat for Halloween. And then at Thanksgiving, I might do like a cornucopia or some corn or something like that. Maybe a turkey. At Christmas, I could make like an elf sitting on here or, you know, something Christmassy. And then probably in the spring, I'll probably just put like a snail or something in the garden. Um, if you do not paint this thing orange, you can use these little solar lights like what I have over here. These lights have a button that changes the color. So if you just kind of leave it, you know, a regular color where you're not painting it or anything, you could turn this thing into maybe like a melon in the spring, you know, change it green, something like that. So you can use this pumpkin to display other objects. And if you really wanted, you could just put a cover over it, leave the rebar sticking out and just change, you know, the animal all the time. So I'm hoping I can use this year round. That's the idea. So I'm going to show you how to make these cuts. Um, pumpkins are s very easy. I learned it watching Jordy uh, Johnson's page because you can kind of mess them up and you know pumpkins aren't normal like it, it, all the pumpkins are kind of little lopsided or they got weird stuff going on. I like making deep cuts to exaggerate the ridges and I'll probably you can do most of this with just a chainsaw. I'll probably sand it a little bit and then I'll burn it and sand it again just to give it a nice smooth finish uh, and by burning it you, you end up filling in the gaps with some color and that's really all I might do I might skin this because the bark will rot this and I'll probably put a couple cuts in here to let water out but other than that um, well it's pretty straightforward but I'll uh, take you through the process so if you've never made a pumpkin before what I'm gonna do so I'm going to start a cut from the top, go all the way down, a straight cut, and then I'm going to turn the bar one way and I'm going to turn the bar the other and copy the cut. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. So what you missed off camera is I burned it. I had to use a uh, large tiger torch to do this well. And I, you see how deep I burned it because it's hard to get the cracks to go black. And the reason we're doing this is twofold. One is for the coloring, to add shading. But two, it protects the wood. So as I sand this down, um, most of the water is going to sit in the cracks. So this will protect it from rotting by burning it. And I, if you don't know what a tiger torch is, it's one of these things. Uh, maybe I can 
I don't know. Maybe I can get it on film if I uh, do the log. It's it's hard. Anyway, uh, now I will start grinding. I'm going to use this Porter Cable uh, grinder as well as this little orbital cutter thing. Uh, I forgot what these are called. Little triangle guys. Uh, oscillating tool, I think. Anyway, this grinder works really good. It just burns batteries up. So I'm going to strip the bark off this um, and burn it. And maybe later I'll put a design in it, but today I'm just going to try to finish it out. A lot of times it's easier to strip the bark off with a square shovel. I also have an old school draw knife, but uh, I don't feel like flipping this thing down and getting on the ground with it. So I'm going to use this shovel. And a lot of times you can get in the bark and kind of, I can't do this one handed very well, but you can get in and tear it off. Not, <laughs> not just playing this very well, but uh, if you get the corners in, and you can crack it out. Anyway, you get the idea. All right, so it's about finished. Sanding's done. Took a lot longer to scrape the bark off. Um, tip, if you ever cut down a tree, scrape the bark off the first day, it's really easy. The longer you wait, it glues down and gets harder and harder. Um, I put some relief cuts in here for the cracking, but also just for um, drainage. So they're all pointing down, so if the water sits in there, it'll have a way to escape. So that's it. Um, I'm going to burn those so you don't see them. And the pumpkin is about done, except for the last stage, I will center this and put a piece of rebar in here and probably epoxy it in. I haven't figured out how I'm going to mount it yet. I'll bring you in for that. So I am putting a hole. I kind of shot a dead center. Um, I tried to measure it out so it's fairly in the center, but you know, it's a pumpkin. Uh, I measured this and marked it at four inches, which is right here. So I'm going to set a four inch piece of rebar in this using a five eighths bit. But uh, I wonder if I can hold this and do this. I don't know if I can. These speed bits are awesome. So for right now, I'm just going to use this big stick as a stem. I drilled four inches in and by the way in case you don't know drills real well this is a drill the one with the numbers the other one sometimes they come in a pack as an impact driver and that will not work you need a drill and I would really suggest you set it down to the lowest clutch because when I put this on two it does not work so remember you want to go down and you know go go way up in your torque if you've never really understood your drill well some of these drills have numbers where it goes from one to two. Put it on one. It'll work a lot better. Okay, so that's the last step. I'm just putting a branch there today, but eventually I'll carve other things that fit on it. And that'll be just like a stem or something. But basically I have a rebar I painted black. It's eight inches. I will eventually blow this hole out and make sure there's no dust in it and then put some sort of caulking or epoxy and set this thing permanently. But for today, that's good enough. And then this kind of lets you swing this around to where you want it. Um, the only thing I might had to do was to kind of shave a little here and there with the chainsaw to get that to fit right. And you'll probably have to plan ahead with your sculptures because it's not going to be a flat surface. Other than that though, I think it's pretty cute, right? Step back and see it. So that's how it turned out. All right, thanks so much for sticking with me and I'll come back with cool stuff in the winter. So it's finished. I had to brighten it up and I carved the stem so it looks better. I also sprayed it with some clear coat just to protect it from the weather and it gives it a little reflection. I like how it came out, looks cool.